Hey, welcome back, guys. James Ghost St. Patrick is one of the greatest characters in television history. His dichotomous depiction as a man trying to usurp the very streets he'd come to master added as much depth to his persona as it did conflict. Prior to being robbed of arguably the greatest arc in the Powerverse, Ghost was on the edge of complete takeover in his next logical step from the underworld to the business world, politics. However, his arrogance, callous demeanor, and perceived betrayal of those he called blood ultimately led to his downfall. But what if things went differently? What would the Powerverse look like if Ghost had achieved political supremacy? In today's video, we'll explore the limitless possibilities such an outcome would present, predicting his future and what might have been. Before we begin, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and bell notification to immediately receive these videos. Also, big thank you to all of my channel donors. If you'd like to be the next one, drop a dollar on that cash app for us. Lastly, a spoiler alert is now in effect for all things power. Here we go. Ghost's final hurrah featured a paradigm shift in his story arc. His fundamental course was rooted in reforming drug dealer turned legitimate businessman. It was fleeting, of course, due to his inescapable past, street sins, and current activity. But this was the premise. A great conflict surrounded by drama due to the nature of both beasts. That conflict also consumed the lead character himself, often finding his actions dictated by the world from which he was attempting to break away from, leaning in on that insidious other whenever his rational mind and circumstances saw fit something I've covered in plenty of videos. However, Ghost Season 6 story raised the stakes on his narrative. His business acumen had placed him on a new level with political figureheads and other major players in tow. He had successfully navigated the underworld to his long-awaited legitimacy in climactic fashion and then some. Ghost was a survivor. In fact, his final episode's title, No One Can Stop Me, along with his perpetual tendency to always come out on top despite the odds, was a testament to this phenomenon. Now having finally reached the mountaintop, the ghost man was about to embark on a whole new milestone and chapter. But as we all know, and many asses are still chapped about to this day, Ghost's illustrious political future was robbed by his past sins in the form of his own son. The current star of Power Book 2 got his pops up out of here, for a myriad of reasons we won't revisit, but the primary transgression against Tariq was Ghost's willingness to allow him to face legal consequences for his part in the murder of a cop. Dirty or not, Tariq's fate would have been wildly opposite to his current one had he faced legal judgment for killing Ray Ray. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. The rage inspired by his father's intentions, plus one of the most heated exchanges between them, resulted in the most contested death in the series, and probably ever. But what if Ghost had survived his dramatic fall after that fateful bullet? I personally always thought that shit wasn't that high, and people survive single bullets more often than not, at least potentially. What if the Ghost Man had awakened in the hospital from that unforgivable event? Let's run down the rabbit hole. Ghost is shot, just like before. All of the circumstances leading up to that tragedy remain intact. He is retrieved at the scene rushed to the hospital and immediately given priority due to his high-profile status and pending election. Ghost awakens in somewhat of a stupor, the events of his last memory replaying in his head continually. Much to his surprise, he has lost all feeling beneath his waist, courtesy of the fall. The paralysis enrages the now fully legitimate figure, that legitimacy coming at a major cost to his physical condition. His sins now forever crystallized by every step he'll never take again. With nowhere to go and nothing but time to plot, Ghost recovers in the hospital, eerily brooding over his condition, its cause, and its perpetrators. He also did something we almost never saw him do. He considered his role in the lives of those out to get him, leading up to that inevitable shot. Though this accountable inner exchange took place, the outcome didn't inspire sympathy or remorse on Ghost's part. To the contrary, Ghost digested every decision he made by the Narcissist Manifesto. Is it in my best interest? His mental Rolodex only served to buffer his past actions against the disgruntled characters in his life, and he made no claim on their decisions towards him. 
After all, he had been harassed. He had been hunted. And of course, he had been shot all in one season. He would be the one facing God's judgment through his very frame for the rest of his natural life. It was on in the worst way once those election results returned and hopefully held his name in the wind column. And thankfully, that's just what occurred. There is no take career resurrection. That fervor would be reserved for the biggest roadblock to his political escalation. The shooting of Lieutenant Governor-to-be James St. Patrick inspired sympathy across the city from his supporters, both civic and civilian. This added galvanization to his base pushed Lorette Walsh's middling campaign through the roof, giving her the shift necessary with the urban population to achieve victory, i.e. the black vote. Also, his physical condition and wheelchair-bound presence increased his support across the board. Though the undercurrent of his losses were haunting, Ghost continued living up to Tasha's emphatic declaration, he always wins. Now fully legitimate, Ghost upheld no street code boundaries in dealing with his adversaries. He cooperated when questioned, implicating his wife in the shooting. He maintained that his budding future was motive enough for her to kill, adding that she attempted to cover up her own illegal misdeeds, which he did not explicitly expose. Shooting a now public official would suffice as punishment in Ghost Mine and would remove his most ardent opponent to his legitimate campaign since season one. There is no witness protection. Once in Albany, Ghost enacted policies to benefit his supporters. On the other hand, he also reflected on that who shot Ghost shortlist of individuals who only didn't get a chance to attack because Tariq beat them to it. That is, except for Paz, who had an opening and chose otherwise. Tommy had witnessed his shooting and the two briefly reconciled their brotherhood prior to the authorities arriving, thus releasing him from Ghost's wrath and keeping his force-bound arc intact. That left him with Cooper Sacks, Dre, Tate, and of course, Tariq. Cooper was at Truth that fateful night, and in this reimagining, Ghost saw him. He understood that the fledgling agent wanted his demise, especially given his ceaseless investigations into the St. Patrick Enterprise. Thus, he kept his name on the board. Dre is still the same crispy bastard he remained in our universe. And though Tate begged for a sign, he was never granted it. But Tate did hire several people to carry out a hit on Ghost Life, something Ghost only came to realize after digging into the past of one of the slain, particularly Sad's character. He opted to give him the same courtesy, now that he was downsized and currently out of the spotlight. As for Tariq, well, he held other plans for Tariq. The junior St. Patrick was spared the fate of his mother. This was partly split between Ghost's name and his ego. He wanted his son to be a model citizen in the world, and as long as he carried his name, it couldn't be sullied by such a heinous act. Ghost decided to deal with his son personally. While split from his father, however, Tariq had become a bigger player in the drug trade, revolutionizing his formula passed down from Kanan and Tasha. On par with Book 2's narrative, Reek was young and thugging, 21st century style, and Ghost wanted him stopped at all costs. This set up an extension to the spinoff we know so well as Book 2, where the father implements policies to subvert the exploits of the son because of the latter's betrayal of legacy. Basically scandal, with the two figureheads serving as Papa Pope and Olivia respectively. That shit would bust, actually. Anyway, after collecting his observations, he went into action. Ghost understood that his physical state would hinder any personal strikes, but the legendary character achieved that status by being the most cerebral in addition to physical leverage. He reviewed his short list of non-negotiables from that bunch and went to work. In a godfather-like swoop, he had Tate and Sax removed, both by the bullet they offered to him by even thinking about his demise. I mean, the fuck? Seriously, though, he realized that these two men would consistently be a hindrance if allowed the gift of God's green earth and fresh air a moment longer. And he'd already lost enough, ignoring the obvious. Thus, he moved accordingly. Then, he places his focus on Tariq. Though he doesn't want him harmed or imprisoned, he mandates the immediate shutdown of Reek's illicit activities. His ego simply will not allow it. He implements sanctions to limit his son's operation after the latter's refusal. Then, once learning of Tasha's continuing role in his life as advisor to the drug trade, Ghost gets her moved to the depths of the jail. 
all but destroying her communication privileges and reach. The two have several run-ins, with Reek expanding on his reasons for doing the unthinkable, and Ghost stressing to him that only blood and his name is keeping him alive, principles superseding emotion. Ghost had won. Well, as much as he could anyway. His ongoing feud with his son wasn't included in his original vision, but he had successfully completed his series arc while continuing this new chapter as villain to his son, or vice versa, depending on who you think is correct. I'll let y'all argue that one below. Ghost continues his political ascension, and when necessary, activates that savage nature that got him on in the first place, and ensures his victorious spot in the face of insurmountable odds for years to come. Thank you for watching today's video. Where do you think Ghost would be had he survived that gunshot and fall? Be sure to drop me your thoughts in the comments below. As always, I thank you for watching today's video. If you liked today's video, go ahead and drop a dollar on that cash app for us, hit the like button, share it with your friends who are power fans, and subscribe for more content such as this. This is Rudy P. Magic of Rudy P. Magic Beats, and have a blessed one until the next one. Peace, y'all.